Hello there, welcome back to Melopine Lasers. Today we'll be looking at laser engraving glass on a diode laser. I did a ton of research and figured out the best way to do it. I tried all the techniques I found and picked the best among them to show you how you can do it. I engraved a lot of glass and then some more and more and I kept on going for over two weeks in a quest for perfectly engraved glass. I also tested engraving glass on a 20 watt, a 10 watt and a 5 watt machine. So stick with me till the end of the video to learn some cool tips and tricks on how to engrave glass on a diode laser. In the end, I'll also show you how I made this layered glass engraving project. Here is the TLDR version for those who don't have the time to watch this video to the end. You get a plain glass, clean it with some acetone or alcohol and apply a coat of black spray paint or acrylic paint evenly. You can also use black cardstock, make sure it makes the glass opaque. The speed and power settings are dependent on the laser machine's power. For a 20 watt laser, run the laser at around 75% and 7500 mm per minute. 100% and 5000 mm per minute for a 10 watt laser, 90% and 500 mm per minute for a 5 watt one. These are approximate ranges. You should run a power scale test to get the best result on your laser. Once you are done, clean the glass using water or thinner depending on what paint you used and you're good to go. You must get four things right to engrave glass on a diode laser. The design, cleaning of the glass, proper speed and power and the transfer medium. Laser engraving glass creates micro fractures on the glass surface, giving it that frosty look. So you'll have areas with the frosty look or without. Getting a grayscale engraving on the glass is difficult. So you want to go with designs with just one color. You can also edit photos to convert them. If you are trying to engrave a portrait of someone, you should remove the background. If you want to engrave grayscale photos, you can paint your glass white and then give it a black top coat and engrave a negative of your photo on it. This will remove the black paint and reveal the white underneath. Still, I wouldn't call it engraving. I'd instead call it laser painting. For engraving on glass, it's best to go with the threshold mode. Do not use the grayscale mode and for line spacing, do not go under 0.1 mm. If the line spacing is too small, the micro fractures will be too close together and it can break the glass. To get a good engraving, your glass needs to be really clean. You can use soapy water and wash it under water. Make sure you don't cut your hands. You can use alcohol to make sure it's really clean. After you are done, wipe it with a clean cloth. Also, make sure you don't touch the glass surface after cleaning. This can leave fingerprints or smudges on it. You can use a cloth or pick it up by the sides. I tried different paints to show you the difference. First, we have the good old tempera paint, which is water-based and easy to use. It gives you a matte finish, but it has one problem. It's difficult to get a good even coat on glass using this paint. I tried the brush and I tried the roller. The roller is worse than the brush. The next option is to use black acrylic or fabric paint. It sticks on well and you can use a brush to get an even coat. But acrylic paint has a glossy finish and reduces the ability of the laser to engrave. When it comes to paints, the best option is black spray paint with a matte finish. I used Rust-Oleum chalkboard black which worked well for me. When it comes to laser engraving glass, the most important factor is that you must apply the paint evenly on the surface. However, there is a go around for this problem. You take the glass, flip it and engrave it on the side with no paint. But you'll have to set the height so that the laser focuses on the bottom. Now, what happens here is that the laser will pass through the glass and engrave on the side with the paint. Even if your paint coat has different thicknesses, it wouldn't matter. If you do this, make sure to mirror your design so that it's the right way when you flip the glass back. Now, there is one more technique that's rarely mentioned on the internet, but it worked so well for me and that is to use black cardstock. We will get to that later. 
let me walk you through each step of the painting process. If you use tempera paint, you will need an airbrush to get good results. If you don't have an airbrush, you can use a sponge brush to spread the paint. Using a regular brush doesn't yield a good result. It's difficult to get a nice even coat using a brush and tempera paint. If you are using acrylic paint, a regular brush could do the trick. Make sure you have coated the surface with an even coat and make sure the glass is opaque. For spray paint, make sure you start spraying outside the edges of your glass and move it side to side to get an even coat. If you start in the middle, you will surely save some paint but you will not get a good coat. Once you have painted the glass, let it dry or use a hot air gun. If you have the time, let it dry naturally. After the paint dries, you can run a power scale test to determine the best power and speed for your laser. If you want to learn how to make the power scale test pattern on light burn, I'll be making a video on how to do it. So I suggest you hit that subscribe button to know when that video comes out. I'll leave a link to the power scale test file in the description below. Anyway, I'll show you the power scale test results of three machines a 5W, a 10W and a 20W laser. You can pause the screen or take a screenshot to refer to later. The first one I did was on the 20W Xtool D1 Pro. The advantage of using a 20W laser is that you can do your jobs faster. But the spot size is larger than less powerful lasers, meaning you'll get fewer details. Now. On my 20 watt machine, I did the power scale test from 60% all the way up to 100% with 5% increments and speeds from 6000 to 10,000 mm per minute with 500 mm per minute increments. One of the best results I got was at 7500 mm per minute and 75% power. There are other good results, but they are at slower speeds. On the 10 watt laser, I tested it between 60 to 100 percent power and 500 to 5000 mm per minute speeds. The best engraving is at 100 percent power and 5000 mm per minute speed. And on the 5 watt one, I tested between 60 to 100 percent power and speeds between 500 to 2500 mm per minute. And the good result was at 90 percent and 500 mm per minute. So if you look at the pattern, you'll see that several of the boxes have been engraved well. So how do you choose between them? If you have similar boxes, go for the one that has the highest speed. The reason is when you engrave at a slow speed, the duration for which the laser beam is at a spot on the glass is longer and it can heat up the glass. This has two effects. One is the engraving will start chipping off and the other is that the glass can break. So try not to keep the speed too slow or the power too high. Once you have the right speed and power, place the glass on the workbed with the painted side down. Set the focus and engrave it. After the engraving is complete, wash the paint off using paint thinner or water based on what paint you used and then wash it with soapy water. But before you do that, always make sure the glass is cool. If your glass is hot, wait for it to cool down before you wash it. Now to the method I talked about earlier in the video. This is perhaps one of the easiest ways to engrave glass on a diode laser. And it's this, a piece of black cardstock that you can find in local stores or online and is cheap. All you do is place a piece of cardstock on the workbed, place your clean glass on top of it, mirror your image on the software and run it at around 45% power and 1200 mm per minute speed on a 20 watt machine. After it's done, wash the suit off and you're good to go. No messy paint to get rid of. You can also do one more thing here. You can reduce the speed and increase the power. This will burn the top surface of your glass. Once it's done, you can use a wire brush or the tip of a knife to scratch off the engraved portion, leaving you with a deep engraving. This is a technique that I found out recently and I've been using it a lot. It's easy to set up and clean and the engraving looks even. In the case of paint, the engraving will have a different appearance based on the thickness of the coat or the way you paint it. I also made this layered phoenix design using the cardstock method. I engraved each piece separately. Each piece has a different part of the design. Then I used my 20 watt X-Tool D1 to cut some 2mm black acrylic to make the frame. 
If you want to learn how to cut acrylic on a diode laser, I'll bring out a video probably in the next couple of weeks. Once the pieces were ready, I glued everything together. I then used some LEDs to light it up. Once it's done, it has a depth effect and looks so cool. Now, talking about engraving glass, it's a great way to personalize and create designs on all kinds of glass. If you have a rotary axis, you can work on curved glass surfaces such as bottles and drinking glasses. You can also make layered glass engravings that looks really amazing. You might have come across the term etching and if you wonder whether engraving and etching are different, they are. Both of these processes create a permanent mark with a frosted look. Laser etching glass alters the surface at a maximum depth of 0.001 inch or 1 thou and requires comparatively lesser power than engraving. Laser engraving, however, requires high power and creates cavities on the surface with a maximum depth ranging between 0.02 inch to 1 by 8th of an inch. If you ask how laser engraving works in general, the laser beams carry a ton of energy. When the beam interacts with the molecules on the material surface, a lot of heat is produced, which can have various effects based on the material can vaporize, get burnt, or undergo a structural change. In the case of glass, the beams pass right through without interacting with the material and therefore we need to do something to make the beam interact with the glass. The most common and effective way to do this is to coat the glass with paint. Now the question comes, what color of paint should you use? The answer is black. The reason is that black things appear black because they absorb all the colors and reflect none back. Which means it will absorb a diode laser beam and transfer the heat to the glass surface. White objects appear white because they reflect all of the colors. Let me show this with an example. I have a white balloon, a black one, a blue one, a green one and a red balloon. In each case, I'll point a blue laser at it from the same distance. Let's see what happens. I'm using a piece of glass to make sure all the balloons are at the same distance. And to show you that I haven't slowed down the video, I'll have a timer running on my phone. So, as you saw, the black one was the first to pop and the white one took forever. I ran out of patience and used my knife. This is because white absorbs energy from blue light much slower than the other colors. Following the same principle, if blue reflects blue beams, what if we use a color complementary to blue? So I tried engraving with yellow paint, which was worse than what I got using blue paint. For engraving glass using a diode laser, black paint is the best option. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, I will make more of these because it's fun. If you want, you can click the like button. Again, no pressure. And if you think it's not good, click the unlike button. That way I will know if I'm making the videos right. Also put your suggestions in the comments and you can subscribe. Yeah, subscribe, do that. Until next time.